Good morning friends, how are you doing? I hope you're all well uh, and for anyone new to the channel, as always my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. So in today's episode we are going into week four against Nino Poker Bros uh, in the X9 Draft League. Very excited to get into this week's game. Uh, unfortunately, because schedule issues and things like that, uh, one, it's very early this morning so if I look tired, it's because I am very tired. Um, I'm trying to get through with copious amounts of coffee which don't seem to be doing the job just yet but hopefully as we go further into the uh the match today it'll it'll get better it'll get better and um, but i the other thing is i didn't really have time to do an analysis video this week so i thought i'd start this one a little bit earlier um obviously i time stamp it so if you want to just skip to the match you can but if you want to check out the team right now with me first of all Let's, let's have a look at uh, their team. Obviously, I'll pop it up on the screen right now for you so you can have a look. They've got uh, Urshifu, Single Strike. They've got the Cinderace, the Corva Knight, Clefable, Togdemaru, Seismitoad, Kangaskhan, Tyranitar, Stoutland, uh, Latias, and Gorgai. So they've got like, some stuff that's going to be super threatening to us. Uh, some stuff that I... I kind of banked on them not bringing um, like the Seismitoad. I think it's a pretty tough matchup for the Seismitoad in this one. It can do a lot of work, but I think because we've got like the inclusion of like Venusaur, we've got like good Trick Room mods with like Torkoal with Solar Beam. Charizard gets access to Solar Beam as well. I think it might be a little bit difficult for it to kind of function. Um, and in my mind, at least, I think. Uh, it probably would have been better to see maybe a physical one because of the rock slide, the fast rock slide, if you could get the rain up or going that way anyway. But yeah, that was something I kind of discounted. I can definitely see him bringing like Urshifu, Cinderace, Corviknight. Uh, they've all been really good Pokemon from in the, the previous weeks. Uh, Talking to Mara is going to be a bit annoying but then again it is really hampered by the, the fire that we've got on the team Kangaskhan is going to be a little bit awkward because obviously it gets scrappy so it means that Mimikyu's trick room setup is going to be a little bit difficult obviously got to watch out for taunt on the Corva Knight um, and then the Tyranitar is the big one as well obviously really not something that Charizard wants to go up against and, and even the Torkoal but we do have Scrafty so that's one of the reasons why we kind of included Scrafty this week I do feel like it's going to be quite important we've got the chopper berry on it um so i've done the calcs with if i can get room to get a bulk up before urshifu enters uh, as urshifu enters the field uh we can kind of with the chopper berry beat it one-on-one -on -one with a drain punch so we've won a bit a little bit more defensive on that side uh, and we've got the bulk up drain punch crunch and fake out fake out's going to be quite useful for us to kind of just create room and and really kind of shut down things like Urshifu, Cinderace that are going to be a little bit problematic for us. Uh, then we've got the Charizard. Obviously going with the Charlie Berry on the Charizard this week because then it, it makes it a little bit easier to face down in that Tyranitar if we're in that situation. Not that we want to be, but uh, with Scrafty support we can kind of manage that situation a little bit better. Uh, then we've got Little Old Tokol. I've went for a, a super defensive one this week. Ball 252, 252. Uh, we've got the Citrus Berry. So it's a really kind of uh, disruptive, uh, good Torkoal that can face up against the Tyranitar pretty well and the Urshifu and a bunch of other stuff on the team. So um, that will, I think, be a good shout. We've got the Venusaur. I've went for Oka Berry because I think with, for the most part, we can take Airstreams from like Corviknight when we're maxed uh, and the Cinderace on minus one. So the, the Airstream the the cover berry isn't as necessary whereas like we can't take uh the the big fire attack from from uh cinderace in the sun so that's why i went for um the oka berry this week to reduce the damage of that and then the spread moves that we've got i think we need weather ball for Corviknight. if we max we need max quake for cinderace sludge bombs gonna be i guess useful for boosting our special attack um and then leaf storm kind of is the the staple on there and we've got Mimikyu bit of a weird set but I do worry about Taunt on Corviknight uh it is one of the things it has access to and I think we are going to need Trick Room this week so Trick Room uh going to be really useful for us Taunt as well to shut things like the Clefable down uh shut the Corviknight down as well I uh, consider it might go for like something like Iron Defense Bulk Up or something like that and Will-O-Wisp Again, going to be very, very useful, I think, status this week. Um, and play rough. The only stab that we generally 
really need. I mean, it leaves us a bit short against Corvo Knight, but would we be doing much damage to it anyway with, with something like Shadow Sneak or uh, Phantom Force? Probably not. So uh, I kind of preferred the, the utility of will o -Wisp here. And then we round off the team with Rhyperia. Went with a weakness policy variant here. Um, and fire punch min speed just so we can under speed Gorgeist in trick room and then we got the the max flare or fire punch if the weakness policy gets procced and then we can kind of go out to town from there the other thing is to, to mention about the mimic you is uh Gorgeist on the team does cause riperia a few issues so uh, if we can burn it that makes it a little bit easier for riperia so i'm gonna get the match set up now with um with uh, Nina Poker Bros. Obviously, make sure to check out their channel and take a look at the match from their perspective this week. It's always fun to see the, the match from the other perspective and uh, other side of the field. And uh, we will be back in a minute when the uh, the match is all set up. Also, someone asked last week if we could throw the, uh, the, the standings up for the, the league at the minute. So I will put them up right here right now so you'll be able to have a look at who is top of the league. So we're just setting the matchup now, um, just waiting um, to connect. Hopefully it doesn't take too long and um, then we'll jump straight into it. Okay, here we go. Game one, week four versus Nino Poker Bros. Make sure to check out their channel. All their stuff is linked down in the description below. And we are going to jump in now, see what they've got. Clefable, Kangaskhan, Latios, Seismitoad, Tyranitar, and Cinderace. Okay, no Corviknight, not Urshifu, which is good. Um, uh, but the Seismitoad is there, no Gorgeist, which makes it easier for the Trick Room to be set up. Um, okay, so we do have some threats to, obviously, Venusaur. But I think if we remove, like, something like the, the Cinderace and the Latios... Then we're kind of in a really good place um, to go. Obviously, this, the Kangaskhan makes it difficult to set the Trick Room up with Mimikyu because of that Scrappy. So uh, we've got to be very careful around that. I don't think we can like freely lead against it if, unless we're like super ballsy. Um, I think we'll go Scrafty. Scrafty Torkoal gives us quite a few options leading out. It's quite passive from ourselves, but it, it also allows us a bit of disruption. Um, I think we'll bring Mimikyu in the back. Now, do we bring... The right period. Do we go like full in on on trick room mode? If we get the room to do it, or do we go with one of our big boys? I think maybe right period. You know, I think for this first one, I think we'll go with the the trick room mode, um, and then if things don't go well in this first one, uh, we'll go we'll we'll readjust. And uh, we'll we'll have to we'll have to think about bringing Big Char and, and Venu to the next one. We'll see how he leads in this first one though, so he can get underway. But yes, I'm pleased that no Corviknight because Corviknight was one of the things that I was like really worried about. Now I know it has a terrible matchup against something like um, Charizard, but at the same time, if you can manage a Charizard with something like Tyranitar, it gets a lot easier for it, you know. So th there is balance there. Uh, Cinderace and Clefable. Okay, right. Well, we get the sun up, which isn't great for um, the opposing Cinderace can do a bunch of damage, and you've also got help in hand, uh, Clefable into that into that Cinderace, which can make things a bit trickier. Um, this is where you want, like, this is where you, do we waste, do we waste a fake out into the Clefable? Probably because I don't really want to get Moonblasted, but I can imagine it going help in hand this turn as well. Uh, it's just, we kind of don't want to, to lose a Pokemon here. Um, now, what are you going to go for? I think one of the things we could do, if we predict, like, helping hand from the Clefable, which I'm expecting we do, is we could switch into Mimikyu right now and then go for Yawn into the Cinderace. And then if we see Follow Me, it redirects that into the Clefable. Um, but you can imagine going Max Knuckle now to overwrite the, the Intimidate drop. And now it's risky because we're relying on Mimikyu quite heavily here. Uh, but at the same time, I think we are going to see Help in Hand from the Clefable to, to bypass uh, the fake out that's kind of inevitably coming into that to that slot to to shut down the the redirection potentially you know so let's see what happens not too worried about topol on this situation like the cinderace is minus one there's a helping hand okay so we get that right if we see the max knuckle then we we've, we've nailed this turn it's gmax fireball okay well that's still all right because 
Ooh, it's into Torko. We take that like an absolute champ. So that's good. And we've got the option now to get our Trick Room up, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal position. So we just Trick Room. Um, do we yawn again? Do we yawn again? <sighs> and to yawn into the Clefable slot and Trick Room. G-Max Fireball coming out again into... Oh! I forget, I forget the disguise, I forget the disguise! We're done, we're done, we're done. We're not done, but it... Ah, uh, what have I done? What have I done? It goes to sleep though, so that's alright. We'll take the Moon Blast, get this... Ah, oh, this... I'm too tired, it's too early. I forget about that and I calc that, you know? I calc it with Mimikyu out of the sun. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe we've just done that. I'm like, yeah, we got the Trick Room up. But it bypasses, it bypasses, negates. Torkoal doing some work though. Um, okay, so we're going to have to rely on everything without the trick room, which is kind of all right. We can, we can, we can, we can do this. We get Rhyperia on the field now. Now we can max, and now we can actually get a weakness policy propped as well at the same time, because we can body press ourselves. So what's going to be better to get rid of? Probably the Cinderace. And it's just one for the G Max Fireball. So. Uh, yeah, okay, let's 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 do yeah, let's go for max and he's got no flyers on his team So we're kind of all right except Latios which you could switch in for Cinderace right now, but I don't know if he's gonna um, Okay, let's body press Body press, body press, body press, body press our own right period So Not the best start and I did even I even even thought about this like coming into the match Honestly, I was like, yeah, Mimikyu, it's, Skies can be bypassed by Cinderace, so we need to be careful with it. And what have I done? Just done the exact opposite. Early mornings in Pokemon do not mix. Cinderace, fast asleep, no switches either, which is kind of interesting. Follow me. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so we'll be able to at least get a uh, defense boost this time and then get the Cinderace in the next turn. So we want these max quakes because we want a little bit of stability against the Seismitoad and uh, Latios when uh, they do enter the field. So. Oh, the, oh yeah, the body press, of course, it'll be redirected. But this this is the next turn that we're gonna be able to have to, we'll be able to get it this next turn. Okay, so we're, we're all right, follow me. Oh, I'm all over the place, but it's okay. It's okay. Now I'd imagine you switch the Cinderace out. Now this is where I do get a little bit uh, dicey about what he's got in the back. I think he probably got the Latios, to be honest. The Levitate makes a lot of sense there. Um, I don't want to get stuck in a trap where we waste a max move, but at the same time... Do we go after the Clefable for a turn? I mean, it's got a uh, it's got a guaranteed turn of sleep this turn. Uh, let's go for the Max Quake here. No, let's let's go for the solid Max Quake. No, because I don't want the Cinderace potentially waking up and we body press again into the right period. Might switch. No, he's no switches coming out, so that's good. No switches, which is great. We'll get the Max Quake. Okay, we've got one more turn of our max turns left. Now this is this is all right. I mean, we kind of need the Clefable not to wake up. But Rhyperia is sitting in a decent enough spot, like plus two special defense. The only issue is we've got no. We've got no uh, trick room to kind of support it. So it does make it a little bit more tricky, of course. But Rhyperia Scrafty might be all right. Maybe. Depends what he's brought. So Latios though. Latios though. It's uh, Scrafty kind of helps us out with that in a big way. Seismitoad's the biggest worry for me, I think, right now. Kangaskhan. There we go. Okay, there he is. The Kang. Um, what's Kanga going to have? I don't really know. Torko kind of threatens it. Is it just going to fake out? I don't know if it will fake out, you know. I think we go after the Clefable here. 
and then go for a yawn. And like punish, no fake out to be honest. Don't need to switch in. Yeah, there's a fake out. Okay, that's fine. Because Fable stays asleep. And then we're going to be able to see what their last Pokemon is. If it's a Tyranitar, we're in business. If it's a Latios or the Seismitoad, it does get a little bit more tricky, but we do have Protect. We've got Scrafty in the back to come in with Fake Out, um, so we can go down that route. Um, Toko flinched and the sun runs out, which is maybe not great, but also at the same time, it kind of works into our favor because we've got the switch out to Scrafty to bring it back, the Toko back in if it is Seismitoad. Seismitoad makes it a little bit more tricky, but at the same time, it's not too bad. Um, so, we have to play the, the waiting game a little bit. Go on to Scrafty now. And the Chopper Berry could still come in useful because something like the Kangaskhan could have like Log Kick, Drain Punch. Don't think it gets close combat, does it? I don't I, I don't know. But let's see what the Seismitoad has got. The special defense boosts though are gonna be so useful for us. Um just gonna make dealing with that seismitoad a lot easier. Especially because we're gonna have access to something like uh potentially a double up this next turn. Because I don't see Scrafty getting taken down here. Their top, fingers crossed. It is not the case. Scrappy. Yeah, yeah. Protects, protects you against the Intimidate, Kanga. Last resort. Oosh. Oosh. Scald. Yeah, into Scrappy. Okay. No burn, which is, which is amazing. Um, we've got uh, Earthquake, haven't we? Which is not ideal. We do have the weakness policy, so I mean, we could just go rock slide, fake out rock slide. Yeah, let's just rock slide here. Yeah, I don't really want to put damage onto Scrafty. High horsepower would have been the better option, to be honest. Um, so, but we got earthquake, so we're gonna have to have to deal with that. Right now, let's see. So we got three. They got two. Seismic to protecting, which is fair enough. But I can't not fake out into that slot, to be honest, because if it doesn't, and we go for like the Kangaskhan fake out, then it's it's it makes things very difficult for us. There's the last resort into Scrafty. Take that pretty comfortably. Um, yeah, and I think what we're going to do this next turn. Um, now, do we protect again? Switch into Torkoal. Or do we switch into Torkoal and then just Earthquake? No, I think I think it's better to not Earthquake this turn and Protect. I think let's let's stall things out because the one thing you got to think of as well, Last Resort doesn't have massive amounts of PP, so it's something to think about as well. The Seismic are going to be a bit rough to deal with. This is where Venu would have been amazing. Um, and considering that we didn't really need the Trick Room as much as we thought we might in this game, then it's it's a cause to think, well, could we bring Venusaur maybe to the next match? Last result, again, we take that pretty well. Skull coming out into the right period there. So with the sun up, we're doing not too bad. And now I think we can go for that. Uh, we can go for the Earthquake. And then we get Scrafty in the next turn. Um, and we could go for a Rock Slide again. Uh, it makes it a bit more tricky for them to deal with because then I think the rocks are just a little bit risky, isn't it? I mean, we could Earthquake and just protect Torkoal. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Because we'll take a Scald. 100%. Last Resort. Let me take that pretty well. No burn, which is huge. We get the earthquake. Okay, that's massive for us. That is massive for us, honestly. Uh, and the earthquake. Let me enough. 
after a very, very dicey start with <laughs> Mimikyu going down, we managed to kind of pull it back. So, uh, keeping in mind, you know, the, the Rhyperia was a big... I think Rhyperia just picked up every knockout there, every single knockout. So, Rhyperia is just a monster. So, great way to give us a good start in this one. Um, and then, hopefully, we can get another win in Game 2. Uh, yeah, I'm just... Yeah, I'm a bit annoyed at myself for the for the Mimikyu, letting it go down so easily there. But I think the, the right period there kind of proved that it was a good shout. It's just about getting it into the position, you know, where we need to be able to uh, to utilize. Um, utilize it well enough and get those special defense boosts. Now I am thinking like Charizard feels like a very good shout here. Charizard Scrafty feels incredibly good. Um, I'm not going to lie, because there's very, I, I don't think it's very likely that he brings um, the Tyranitar, because I think he's going to think that we're going to stick with what we've got, if I'm completely honest. And I really do feel like Charizard, um, Scrafty, Torkoal, and then Rhyperia maybe, Rhyperia, 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 or... Maybe Venusaur. Venusaur hasn't got Protect, which makes it a little bit more tricky to deal with things like the Kangaskhan in the, the end game. Whereas Rhyperia can kind of come in. Um, Venusaur, 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 Venusaur. I think we got Venu. I think we got all guns blazing in this one. See how we get on. I mean, we could see the Latios, which makes things a little bit more tricky. Uh, because then we haven't got the Trick Room mod at all. Whereas Mimikyu could come in and do some decent work for us. But... Now let's lock in, let's lock in. Because once the Cinderace goes down, like Venusaur has a pretty easy time, especially if the sun's up and we've got access to, to like, to max. So, we'll see. We're in a position now though, where we're one up. We are in a position where we can kind of experiment a little bit and take that little bit of a risk. Where if the, the she was on the other foot, I think we'd have to be a bit more cautious how we, we go into this one. So let's see. Can we lock up a win for week four? Clefable Cinderace. Okay. That's ideal. That is ideal. Got to watch out for Sing as well, you know, on Clefable. It's something it does have access to. A bit, a bit tricky. Um, all right. Let's play the Airstream Wars, I guess. Now, do we... Do we... Do we... Do we... Do we... Do we... Do we, do we, um, do we just... Yeah, let's max Airstream. And then that gives us such a, a big, big boost. Are we going to see a helping hand again? Uh, potentially. Potentially. Or is he going to fall for... Um, I think we max Airstream. And then I think we go for a fake out this time. Just to prevent the uh, the helping hand. And then the next turn we've got the, the, the talk will switch in if we want to. Just need to make sure we get the wildfire going because that's gonna really really help us and committing to charizard with the the gigantamax here so not venusaur but venusaur can come in super handy late game like i say we just gotta oh what's coming in what is coming in seismitod well don't mind that do not mind that one little bit because we're gonna see the clefable do something other than helping hand here i think so yeah I guess he's predicting around, like, well, I don't know. We still got to be careful around the Seismitoad, of course, because it can overwrite our sun, and it makes it very tricky to deal with, especially if it gets his max air streams up. And uh, Clefable just protecting. Okay, well, let's see. Let's see what we get. The Seismitoad we know is special. Oh, that is just that is such nice damage that's such nice damage do we go for the wildfire here though I think we go wildfire into Clefable and switch into Torkoal yeah and then we got Venusaur to help kind of cover um, the Seismitoad and the Clefable to a certain extent, you know. So once the Toll calls in, we can switch out to Venu. We've got Yawn to help disrupt as well. You can imagine the Seismitoad is going to max here, though. You know, it's going to go for Max Geyser, 100%, um, to override our sun. But we do have the switch out to Venusaur in that, in that same situation where we can go switch to Venusaur, 
Protect Charizard. Um, Max. Oh, we're not seeing. We're not seeing. Oh, there's no. Huh. No Max from the Seismitoad. So we do get a Clefable, which makes things a heck of a lot easier for us. What are we going to see the Seismitoad do then? Doesn't want to Max it. Which is interesting. Skull coming out. Yeah, which we take pretty comfortably. And we're in a pretty nice spot now with this wildfire chipping away at that seismitoid. Not going to be real, really too much of an issue going into the next turn. Uh, Cinderace comes in, it's going to be really threatened. There's no redirection now. Uh, and we got a good switch into Scrafty. I think the next... Mm, 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 mm. Do we even worry about the seismitoid? I don't think so with Venusaur on the back. I think we airstream into potentially something like the Cinderace. It's Kanga. Kanga coming out. But again, do we worry about Kanga too much? Do we worry about Kanga? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we just got GMAX. And we switch into Scrafty. And then it keeps the, the sun in the back for us as well. But Charizard's going to have, like, this is the last turn of Max. But at the same time, we've done a good amount of work with it so far. Obviously, the Cinderace is still a bit of an issue. So we need to, to keep check on that. And it's not ideal getting Scrafty onto the field now. Um, when we need the Intimidate for the Cinderace. So we've got to keep that in mind. Um... There's a fake out. Yep. But we're going to be able to remove this Kangaskhan from the field. And like I say, we don't really worry too much about the, the Seismitoad because the wildfire is going to be enough to take Kanga. Yeah, there's the Earth Power. Okay. Which Scrafty just takes like a champ. Solar Power chipping us down. And now we have access to, to Heat Wave as well. The problem is, um, obviously, the Cinderace coming in. But it is kind of Cinderace versus the world. So we need to just rotate... Um, Scrafty out. Prote mm, do we protect? Do we protect Charizard, or do we just allow it to kind of get attacked this turn? Because they've got to airstream. They've got to airstream. They have to airstream. They have to airstream. But it's probably a good idea to kind of uh, stall out these max turns. So it might be a bit more pragmatic to. Um, I mean, we could just heat wave. Because if they airstream, ah. What are we going to do? Let's protect Charizard here. Let's protect Charizard. Let's play this a little bit slower. We don't need to rush into things. I think we protect Charizard. We switch out Scrafty for Toll Call. Then we can switch Scrafty back in. Or maybe Charizard the next turn, you know. And then utilize uh, Toll Call with Yawn uh, to put the stoppers on that Cinderace and then close the match down from there. So, let's see. G-Max incoming. Where are you going to go? Are you going to go after the Scrafty? I would imagine. Maybe. 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 But Tolkol is, is bulky enough to be able to kind of deal with this. So, it's alright. Even though it's like not minus one. Right now. It is full power in the sun gonna take advantage gonna rip through everything seismitoad protecting which is a little bit i don't really yeah i mean you're gonna go down to the wildfire this turn um yeah and going into that charizard slot so that's fine uh seismitoad gonna go down to the wildfire residual here um yeah the solar power not helping us a bunch now we do have the option where we can get some damage onto uh cinderace here but at the same time, I don't think we necessarily need to. Um, let's go into Scrafty, get that minus one, which is going to make it a heck of an easier time. And then go for the Yawn. <sighs> and then once Cinderace is snoozing, we can bring Venusaur in and just close it up. And I mean, combination between like Toko, Venu, uh, Scrafty and Charizard, we should be all, should be all right. So, let's see, Max Darkness. Please be into the Scrafty. Please be into the Scrafty. That would be ideal. No, it's into Tokol. But, like, Tokol... I think the call here was definitely the, the bulky Tokol. It's just tanking these attacks. Especially with the Intimidate support. It makes it so much... So much harder to deal with, you know. It's such a nasty, nasty build. Uh, if it's in the right situation, obviously. Uh, we do get the Yawn off, which is incredible. Um, I don't think we need to switch around here too much let's go for bulk up 
and let's go for a do we protect i mean do we need to protect probably not we can probably just body body press actually we go for burning jealousy we cover like the max knuckle oh but then that overwrites yeah that overwrites <laughs> actually what have we done we've just overwritten our, our own yawn but we do get the burn so that really shuts it down but the sleep would have been way better i think we've just absolutely just yeah thrown thrown it thrown yeah okay well the bulk up would have been way better to be honest but at the same time Unless there is a Lum here, and then this is the, the ultimate play, right? If that Cinderace is holding Lumberry, which I don't know, has it got Life Orb? Have I even pay, been paying attention? I don't know. Burning Jealousy coming out. Get the burn. Is there a Lum? There's no Lum. Okay, so it's just burn. It's not going to sleep either. That, that yawn was totally wasted. But, I mean, it's minus, still minus two, I guess. Yeah, minus two, because it's got the plus one. Um... So, yeah, we're, we're kind of all right. We can just drain punch. Uh, we've got to keep an eye on the sun, though, as well. How many turns of sun have we got left? Because we don't want to put ourselves into a... Oh, the sun's run out. Okay, so this is where we want to switch things around. I think we bring Charizard in for fodder. Just make sure that we are clicking the right buttons here. So we're going to drain punch. Charizard. And then we can get Torkoal Venu back in. And that kind of wins us the game because... He's not got the speed control there, so it's all right. We're just dragging this out a little bit longer than we should have. I can't believe I just overripped my yawn. Rip, rip, rip. Pyro Ball coming out. Change to the fire type in. Scrafty avoided, which is really unfortunate. Uh, we do get the drain punch off, and that is going to be a knockout for Scrafty there. So we are able to win victorious, which is amazing. And, uh, sorry, just send a message to uh, Nino there. And um, we are going to tie ourselves up once again. 2-2, we are now in the league. So we've we've had losses to Alex and Joe previous weeks, but we have managed to get um, two wins um, as well, which ties us up, sets us up really well going into the, the week five and on. So hopefully now we can start that kind of momentum train. We saw the Rhyperia have an absolute blast in that first one there. And then Charizard, I feel like it was a good call um, just because of how impactful the Rhyperia was in that second one. But uh, very good games to Nino. Amazing and a really nice guy. Pleasure to play him. Definitely check out his channel. And uh, because it's so early, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. But I'm going to I'm gonna cut this short now. So have a great rest of your day. Um, we'll have an analysis video for the coming week. Apologies for not having one this week. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably go back to bed because it's, it's pretty early. So <laughs> I'm not lazy. I'm not lazy. Um, but thank you so much as always for tuning in. And I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.